basins that cost money. They also need fresh air. They also need uh, uh, whatever global warming, uh, the opposite of whatever global warming producer don't like to be drowned in, in uh, you know, Maldives and Bangladesh, part of them would be. They want all of these things. And I think the whole purpose of reasoning in economic terms is to see how to reconcile them, rather than saying, well, if authoritarians might have been mistaken being anti-growth, the Greens have given us a reason for being anti-growth. I don't think, I take it you are, you are on the green side. I, and <laughs> I, 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 I hope you go, don't go that way. That's, a, that's my hope. <laughs> I appreciated your, recent, your comments okay, on you. the recent yeah. election and um, your, your statements about the need for, for public understanding um, you know, of the sort of democratic process and the issues and so on. Um, I would be interested to hear your view of the future for liberalism in this country and how inequality can possibly be addressed. That is liberalism with a large L, is that right? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I'm the expert on the subject, actually. Uh, I, I think I can promise to think more on that. Inequality? <laughs> inequality, inequality we can. Inequality, I think there's, um, there's a great book published recently, named the, uh, uh, by Tony Atkinson on inequality. Uh, he discusses a lot of it including what it should not be blamed for. It is the idea that inequality caused the crisis isn't quite correct in that form. Inequality is a terrible thing to happen. And certainly the crisis has made it much worse. That's all true. I think inequality has to remain a part of our business. But you know, inequality is just one way of describing a collectivity. Inequality includes some people not getting enough and also getting far less than others are getting. So if you look at, if your focus is on the individual, maybe I, if it had been liberal with a small L, I would have had an immediate sympathy with that, <laughs> that I would like to take the view that we have to go back to the person, the individual. Actually, quoting, in fact, Marx on German ideology, that one thing you don't want is an abstraction of social con concepts uh, detached from the individual. Uh, I actually, my collective choice in social welfare began with that quote. Um, I think the inequality is a summary statistic which unfolds itself in terms of horrors in individual life. And it's those horrors we have to address. And I thought I was addressing that. But thank you for raising that question. Dana, am I allowed one more question? Yes, one more question. Here is a, who, no, actually, who's got the microphone? That'll be quickest. Give it to whoever's nearest you. <laughs> and hope they were asked a good question. Hurry up, please. Yes? Um, I, I would like to congratulate Charleston for inviting this marvellous man to give this talk. And please, can we have a copy of it or something? Because we need to spread this knowledge and understanding as far as possible. Thank you a thousand times. I, I can't tell you how encouraged I feel by, um, by your kind, very kind remark. At this moment, I have reason to think that New Statesman wants to publish it uh, in number after next. So it will be available then. Yeah. I think there was a question somebody would ask. I think, I think uh, Diana's looking glaring at me. We've got, we've got, <laughs> okay. we've got I, things I, to do. Did you want to say anything else? I would simply like to say thank you very much, Amati. That was an absolute... I hate economics. I don't understand it at all. What you say, a child of six could grasp. And I can't understand why people who are in charge of the country failed to do so or why they didn't fall at your feet and agree with you. There it is. Your day will come. Um, now I'm going to hand over to Diana to, for the last part of our proceedings. Um, okay, well, I'm really sorry to have to suppress yes. questions because I know you sure. raised so many issues, Amartya, um, but I'm sure you will understand that there's another part of this session which is also going to be very exciting. First of all, though, I, I'd like to 
on all our behalves, I'm sure, thank Amartya for a characteristically analytical, witty, profound and enlightened and humane talk. Thank you very much. As most of you will know, and as Alistair explained at the beginning, this is actually part of a, a prize-giving event, um, so we need to come to the prize-giving element of it. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about that prize. Um, the, the, the decision to award Amartya the prize, to be the first recipient of the Charleston EFG Maynard Keynes Prize, was taken by a group of extraordinarily eminent people. Um, and so I would, I would just very... Most of them are here this evening, but not all of them. As you've already heard, Liz Forgan was the chair. Um, so uh, uh, the other panel of advisors consisted of Nigel Newton, who's the chair of the Charleston Trust and the CEO of Bloomsbury Publishing, Robert Skidelsky, who I'm sure you all know is the expert on Keynes, um, Simon Keynes, who some of you would have heard before, um, who um, is Keynes's great nephew, but also very eminent professor um, of Anglo-Saxon studies at Trinity College, Cambridge. Um, Michael Proctor, who is a professor at King's and is also the provost of King's College, Cambridge, where Keynes studied. And Keith Gap, um, who's our very enlightened sponsor, um, sponsor of the award, our partner in this prize, um, who Alistair's already mentioned to you. Um, the prize itself is, is um, going to take the form of something that we hope is, ve well, we believe um, is very compatible with the ethos of Charleston. Um, it's going to be a sum of money in order to allow the recipient, it's going to be £7,500 in order to allow the recipient uh, uh, um, Amartya Sen, to commission a work of art of his choice. Um, be, uh, and we thought this was highly compatible with all, everything that Charleston stands for, uh, creativity, um, the work of the imagination, and also what Keynes stood for. Um, after all, he was the first initiator of the Arts Council and was a great uh, patron of the arts. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do now is to call up um, I mean, obviously, Amartya is going to commission this prize, so we, we, we can't see the prize at, at the moment. Um, I'm going to call up um, Keith Gap to present him with something, nevertheless. But I just want to ask Amartya, do you want to say anything about what you're thinking about commissioning? Have you, have you, or, 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 or do you want to have more time to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a very difficult choice because um, uh, I... Um, some uh, uh, some thought which has been growing in my mind is to um, uh, get in, uh, uh, get um, uh, someone um, possibly in India to do my uh, ancestral house, which has, I'm very loyal to it. It's called Patichi. Uh, I was born in Santa Nikesan in in that village and. That, that wasn't the house where I was actually born, but it was the house <laughs> from then. And, um, and when I got the novel, I was, uh, I, I was uh, able to give the money uh, in the name of the Fertici Trust, in the, uh, celebrating the house where the family lived. Um, uh, half for Bangla. No, I think they were divided between Bangladesh and India. I think India and Bangladesh, two thirds, one third, divided. So I think there's some idea and I'm being encouraged by my wife on that is to have a picture, have a painting of the house, uh, which of course I like very much. But this is a tentative thought. You have to get an artist and you have to say somebody who says this is fine as an object. So I think that's okay. Uh, well, well thank you very much for sharing with us. us. We, we, uh, I knew that that's what Amartya was thinking about, and I thought um, even if it's tentative, um, you'd like to hear uh, uh, you'd like to hear what he was considering. And uh, the, the, the other thing I did just want to say, um, we don't think it's at all eccentric that you should change the world from Charleston. Uh, um, after all, that's what Keynes did when he wrote the economic, or tried to do when he wrote the economic consequences um, of the peace. So I'd like to invite Keith Gap up, who is going to present 
a marcher with something to keep him going. <laughs> Uh, as Diana has mentioned, the main prize lies in the future, but uh, tonight it's my privilege to present a, a, a memento to uh, Professor Amartya Sen, uh, which is a, 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 a wonderful uh, print of a Duncan Grant uh, portrait of uh, John Maynard Keynes. Oh, and it's... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will look after the corner of this place. I'll look up. Uh, if you look after, okay. Uh, uh, um, I just wanted to mention that that came from the King's College uh, collection. Um, so we'd like to thank the Provost of King's College um, for allowing us to make a reproduction, as well as the estate of Vanessa Bell. So before rounding off this evening, I just want to say that Amartya has signed some books in advance. Um, if any of you would like to buy any of his books, because you know he's going to be. Uh, uh, he just came from abroad yesterday. Today I know um, he, he's got other functions this evening, um, but he has signed some books in advance. Also, um, for those of you who are intrigued with the uh, uh, mention of the economic consequences of the piece written here at Charleston by Maynard Keynes, um, just to let you know that there's an extract of it in the Penguin Classic Classic Essential Keynes, which has just been published and is edited by Robert Skidelsky. Um, so uh, you, you could see an extract there and also there's a print on demand um, edition of the economic consequences of peace if you want to ask at the bookshop um, leave your names and addresses I don't know they'll make an arrangement to send it to you so it just really remains for me um, to express all our thanks once again to Liz and also to Amartya Sen <laughs>